Good morning, strong friends. It is the first of the month. It's September 1st, so happy first. Um, we are at the Bod Pod in Burlington today, Burlington, Ontario, and today is the day that I go get my body composition testing at the Bod Pod. This will be my fourth round of testing. I had May 2015, September 2015, May 2016, and of course we're back here for September 2016. So I'm going to go inside. We're going to go through our, um, our bod pod procedure, see what happens. I will film it all. And then we're going to go back home and I will review all my notes and tell you how I've gotten to where I am today and see what's in the store next. So talk to you guys soon. And it's only been a week. Okay, Other we'll than that, about. I was doing my own stuff. Okay, we'll talk after that. Okay, okay here we go. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Don't take anything off yet because I want to see what the numbers look like. Let's mix it again. Is that real? And look at your name. That's like stayed. That's like up a little. That's awesome. And you've dropped three pounds in body fat. And maintained your lean. Your 120.9. That's so exciting! Yay! Hey guys, it's Courtney again. Um, so I just got back from my Bod Pod results, and I am honestly as happy as a pig in the mud. So anyway, I am overly happy with how the test went. I was honestly, I was surprised with the results. Not much of a change. But it was a big change, so right now I'm going to go through what my results have been for my last four rounds of testing with the Bod Pod. I've only ever done four, so basically from the start of my journey, May 2015, when I started losing weight, or what kind of kicked me in the butt to lose weight, and where I am today. I'm going to go through the Bod Pod and talk about basically what it is, why it's accurate, what the advantages are, talking about what it tests and why it tests and what the tests are. I want to fill you in on kind of my secret and how I got to where I am now. I also want to kind of wrap everything up, tell you how how this works, why it's successful, and what you can do to be successful just like me as well. So round four of Bod Pod testing. So I have all of my sheets here, my four results because I keep all of my files. So if we go back to May 1st, 2015. Um, I weighed in at 143.2 pounds, which was nearly the, my heaviest. My fat mass was 43 pounds, which was 30.1% body fat. My lean mass was 100.2 pounds, 
and my lean mass percentage was 69.9%. September 1st, 2015, I was 123.3 pounds. My fat mass was 25.6 pounds, which converts to 20.8 pounds. So in those four months is when I would say I lost majority of my total body mass. So overall weight, um, plus most of my body fat percent as well. My lean mass did drop. It went down to 97.7 pounds, which converts to 79.2% of my total mass. April 30th was as close as I could get to, to May 1st. Um, so April 30th, 2016, I went to 123.5 pounds. So virtually there wasn't really a change from my second to third round of testing. My fat mass went to 24.3 pounds and my body fat dropped slightly to a percentage of 19.7. My lean mass did go up though so I went up to 99.2 pounds which converts to 80.3 percent. And September 1st so this morning I weighed in at 120.9 pounds which isn't the lightest that I've been but um, according to the bod pod that is definitely my lightest. My fat mass went to 21.2 pounds, which converted to, drum roll please, 17.6%. So it's funny because I actually had a goal at the beginning of 2016 that I wanted to hit 18% body fat. No big reason why I wanted to do it, it was just a goal that I had and I wanted to hit that. So yay, I hit my goal, so I'm super, super pumped about that. My lean mass did stay the same, it went up 0.5, so my lean mass went up to 99.7 pounds, which converts to 82.4%. So total in the last 16 months from May 1st, 2015 to September 1st, 2016, I've lost 22.3 pounds and 21.8 of that was pure body fat. I lost 12.5% of my body fat, which was pretty friggin' awesome. So. Yay! Okay, so what is the bod pod? What does it do? Why is it important? Why is it pretty much like one of the best tests out there? And how can you do it? So the bod pod is actually an air displacement machine that uses whole body density testing to determine your body composition. So your fat mass versus your lean mass. It is very similar to the underwater weighing and its accuracy is about one to two percent, which virtually again is almost the exact same as underwater weighing. The bod pod measures your body mass or your overall weight using a very precise scale, which then ca calculates your body density. So the advantage of uh, using a bod pod versus using calipers or an impedance scale or whatever you want to use to measure your body fat. So the advantage of using a bod pod, it definitely has a high level of accuracy. It's very easy to use and has a very quick test time. So compared to underwater weighing, the bod pod doesn't require getting wet and it's well suited for special populations such as like children, the obese, the elderly, or disabled people. I've never done underwater testing, but I have heard that you have to have basically complete lung depletion. So when you go in there, you have to exert all of the air in your body, which is really, really hard to do. One, because people don't know how to do it, but two, you I would say unless you're actually skilled at depleting your lungs, you don't know how to do it properly and to the best of your abilities. There is a little bit of variance when you do underwater weighing, which is why comparable, this is doing bod pod testing is much, much easier and you're going to get basically the same results. So again, the accuracy is about 1-2% to doing bod pod testing. Again, the same as underwater testing. And I know that people do DEXA testing which is totally cool. I've heard that it's very comparable to bod pod. The reason why I chose bod pod versus DEXA is because bod pod's about five minutes away from my house, whereas uh, the closest DEXA scan location is about 45 minutes away. So bod pod is just a lot more convenient for me and it's what I choose. So obviously that's what I'm gonna stick to to measure my progress. So again, the, body, the bod pod tests your overall mass, which is your weight, it tests your fat mass and then your lean mass. So your fat mass is basically the amount of body fat on your body. Lean mass is everything except your fat. So that goes with your muscles, your water, your bones, and your organs. When we talk about burning fat, there's actually two different types of fat tissue. There's visceral fat, which is active fat, and then there's sub, I never say this properly, subcutaneous fat. 
So subcutaneous fat is actually stored below your skin. And it's a type of fat where you can basically like pinch an inch from your belly or your arms or like this stuff. That, that's your subcutaneous fat. That's virtually anywhere on your body. Visceral fat, on the other hand, is much harder to identify and it's stored around your internal organs in your abdominal region, including your liver, your pancreas, and your intestines. So everything around your midsection. When people talk about losing body fat, it's usually a combination of the two. So your almost like, like your external body fat and your internal body fat. I believe that I carry a lot of my fat tissue as visceral fat, which is why I don't necessarily look my body fat percentage. I talk about me being cold all the time, and people are like, oh, well, your body fat's so low. Yes, I am at a very lean body fat percentage right now, but even when I was about 30% body fat back May last year, I was still cold. I was still suffering these issues. So it's not that my body fat is an extreme low, so, and people do carry their body fat very differently. If you compare me, so a 17.5% female to a 17.5% other active female, our, our body compositions could look completely different. So again, it's dependent on the person, it's dependent on the genetics. Same thing with counting macros, it's dependent on the person. So just because my macros are the way they are, or just because my powerlifting training is the way it is, doesn't mean it's necessarily going to translate to another person or to a group of people. So again, things are custom, they're genetics. There's many external factors that come into play in so many different areas of your life. Getting back on track. So two things that I did to help me be successful and to help me shed the 22 and a half pounds of body fat that I did shed in 16 months. One, is I was eating according to my goals. So I wasn't just eating because it felt good or I thought that's what I needed. I was actually tracking my macros. I was seeking out help from professionals to ensure that my intake was appropriate for my daily activity and my future goals and adjust accordingly. So as I lose weight, I don't need to necessarily consume the same amount of calories. So sometimes I was dropping accordingly. Sometimes I was increasing to reverse some metabolic issues that I was suffering. I was also staying on track within a reasonable balance. So I wasn't obsessing or trying not to obsess over tracking my macros. I did still go on vacation. I still still did go out for untracked meals or to weddings or whatever the case is and not freak out that I didn't have my scale with me or I wasn't able to see nutrition information with, with the menu options that I was provided. So it was it was all in balance. The second thing I did, I was training according to my goals. So not only was I eating towards my according to my goals, I was also training according to my goals. So yes, I wanted to start getting into powerlifting and I wanted to be stronger, but I also had to prep my body for that. So there was about six months from May 1st until about November where I was just doing bodybuilding training. I was conditioning my body and prepping it to get into the powerlifting training that I wanted to do. So it did take about six months for my first bod pod session to burn off some fat before I seriously got into powerlifting, before I didn't need to do as much hypertrophy training and could do more strength and power training. I did follow a couple powerlifting programs at the beginning. That included Lane Norton's PH3 trainer. I was also using Travis Mash from Mash Mafia, his powerlifting program. Those two programs are very, very different and they're... They're, they're very different in many different areas, so not only mentally, but physically and emotionally, they are very demanding in different areas. So again, it's what works for you. Just because it works for me doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for somebody else, so do what's best for you. Now I'm doing my own programming for my powerlifting, just because there are things that I do need to work on that these general programs don't benefit. So I am working on my strengths, my weaknesses, I'm doing improvement work, I'm Say I need to really work on my bench press. I'm going to bench press a little bit more than I'm going to squat and deadlift, right? Again, it's custom for the person. So I am doing my own programming for my competitions. I had one about seven weeks ago. I have one in about two and a half weeks. And I have had awesome success so far. So everything's going really, really well. Also, in accordance to training to my goals, is I'm doing minimal cardio. A lot of people think, well, if she burned 22 pounds of fat, she's probably doing so much cardio, which is in fact the exact opposite of what I've been doing. I cut my cardio down drastically, even in the last two years. 
So I never wanted cardio to overtake my powerlifting and strength goals. Yes, I wanted to burn fat, but really I was like, I want to get stronger and I want to do powerlifting competitions. Now that I've done my first powerlifting competition, I have so much more ambition and drive to do more competitions that I'm more focused on getting stronger than I am technically getting leaner, if that makes any sense. So for the first about 10 months from May, I'd say about beginning May 1st to about December 1st, so everything last year, I was doing two hit sessions a week, which was about 20 to 30 minutes of high intensity intervals or cardio, whether it was rowing or skipping or kettlebells or track sprints, depending on the weather. So yeah, those lasted about 20 to 30 minutes each. From there, I, I, all I wanted to do was maintain my cardiovascular endurance by doing one interval session a week, and I have been fairly consistent with that since January. The only reason I do that is because if I'm doing, say, my program is calling for seven reps of something, I don't want my cardio endurance to be so shit that I can't do those seven reps because my lungs give out before my actual strength gives out. So all it is is I'm just maintaining my cardiovascular endurance in that sense. So overall, this little video and my body composition results are pure proof that a combination of flexible dieting and powerlifting or strength training is a great combination to get strong and slim down at the same time. This is proof that lifting heavy does not make ladies bulky. If any of you follow me on Instagram, you will see a lot of my progress pictures and I am nowhere near bulky. Um, I'm definitely strong, I am lean, I have dense muscle, but I am nowhere big or thick and I'm actually the smallest that I've ever been, so. Win-win. It's absolutely possible that you can lose pure body fat without losing muscle mass. It does take a long time and it is very challenging, but this is proof that I've lost 22.3 pounds and 21.8 of those pounds have been pure body fat according to my body pod results. Consistency and hard work does pay off. This isn't something that's going to happen over 12 weeks. You're not going to all of a sudden shed 30 pounds of fat in a month. It's not going to happen. And if it does, it's probably not the healthiest approach. So consistency and hard work will pay off if you do maintain it. Also, accountability is key. And that's whether you set personal goals, you set future appointments. So I already know that I'm going back for my bod pod testing in four months. And if I have goals for that, I'm going to set those so that I am accountable. Or whether it's working with a coach. So weekly check-in, checking your progress, having someone else set your numbers for you so that you don't have to stress and worry about it, about it so that you will actually see results. So on that note, if you are interested in working with me as a coach, whether it's flexible dieting, powerlifting, or a combination, go to my website, which is CourtneyForLife.com, all one word. Go to my online coaching section, and I do have new powerlifting programming that I am just implementing. It's 24 weeks of powerlifting and nutrition training that if you are interested in it, obviously fill out the questionnaire, shoot me an email if you want, message me with comments below, message me on Instagram. There's so many methods of contacting me if you have any questions about powerlifting or nutrition training with me. So this wraps up my video today. That's all I wanted to get through. So I'm super, super happy with my bod pod results. You can lose pure body fat. It is challenging, but it's definitely doable. Lifting weights doesn't make you bulky and you can have so much fun along your journey. Okay, so I hope everyone has an awesome day. It's September 1st. It's an awesome start to the month. Be positive, be focused, and have a good day, guys. Thank you. One more thing that I did want to include in my video <laughs> is that if you do want to get your body composition testing and you are in the Burlington, Ontario area, I will have the contact information included below this YouTube video. So if you do want to get your body composition at the Bod Pod, you can contact Deb Anderson. She knows who I am and she's awesome. And she will definitely hook you up. Or you can message me and I will give you more info. Thank you.